Hi, Chandralal. Hi, hi, Mono. How are you? <laughs> fine, fine. Thank you. Very good. So, where are where are you now? Where am I? I'm in Bangalore talking to you now. Where are you now? At present, I am in Kollam. Okay. Thank uh, you, in my in my residence. Okay, great. Now, good morning, Chandralal. Welcome to the daily brunches uh, Zoom meeting. Yeah. Good morning, Mono. Good morning. Thank you. And uh, I would just tell the brief the readers about who this gentleman is. By the way, uh, we have, it's very it's a big honor for us to have a, I call him Mr. Golden Gloves. This is Mr. Chandralal Damodaran, the boxing coach of the Indian boxing team, and also the recipient of the Dronacharya Award from the government of India. And now has been declared for the year 2021 Kerala's Olympian Suresh Babu's Lifetime Achievement Award also. Congratulations on our, our behalf of all our readers and me in particular on your great you. achievement. And welcome to our conversation. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, it's an honor to have you there because normally we do individuals on food and artificial intelligence and IT and all that. But having you as a boxing coach and a Dronachari Award winner, it's, it's a, a real honor for us. Uh, I use the name Golden Gloves for you because I have noticed uh, yeah. what is the specialty of the name Golden Gloves to you? You know, say Golden Gloves, at present, the Golden Gloves is the name of my house, my residence over here in Kollam. Wow. Uh, okay. Basically, you know, we had a club in Tangasheri in Kollam okay. by name uh, Golden Gloves. And that was a club which I was brought up and I started boxing in that club and with that label we came out well and wow. we used to organize state level uh, boxing championships also there so that's the way i got it attached and later i came to know that our greatest i mean all-time greatest uh, professional boxer Mohammad ali was also having a club and his personal club was known as golden gloves gym in usa so wow. that uh, the day uh, name has Wait. been come from there, there. and we oh. also had the chance of following the same principle and later i made the name of my residence my official house as that and there is a reason behind that the okay. house where i'm staying now i bought this plot and constructed this house and all the expenses which i have met for this is from the achievement of my trainees. When my trainees have won medals in the official world championship and all, the government okay. of India, Ministry of Health Affairs and Sports used to give, uh, you know, incentives and cash awards. So okay. not only for the trainees, myself being the coach of the, of these prominent trainees, I also have received. So you're trying to tell yeah. me that all the medals your trainees have won and yeah. the awards they get are also shared with you? Is that what you're trying to tell us? Yeah, actually, you know, see, whatever the incentives they are getting, they will get it. But I am getting it from the ministry, not from wow. the pocket of the trainees. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because, okay. you know, when a trainee, if a trainee is getting 10 lakhs, the coach also get 5 lakhs incentive by the central government. Wow. So that's an incentive purely for the coach. And okay. I have, uh, you know, uh, accumulated all those amount and I bought this plot and made a house of it. And it is named as Golden Gloves. And uh, I have kept my house open for all the boxers, whoever is coming to Koilon. They can <laughs> stay with me. They can dine with me. Because, wow. you know, all whatever I have achieved is through boxing. So it is okay. left for the boxers. Fantastic. Yeah. Because uh, for me, everything so it, it interests me because... Golden Gloves is now the name of your house where the boxers are invited and also the name of the first of the boxing clubs in your hometown yeah. where you were practicing yeah. and all that. So how did exactly. you get into boxing? How did you get into boxing? from the Let's start from the early days. Yeah, actually, basically, I was an athlete. During my school days, I was doing athletics and okay. my uh, main event was pole vault. I have won medals in the Kerala State Schools Athletic Meet. And even I was a medalist in the Kerala University Athletic Championships many times. Okay. And since I came to know that pole vault doesn't have much future, 
okay in kerala because you know you need a fiberglass pole you need a big uh, mat pit and all so it was not available so okay. during my you know after my 10th standard uh, i used to do cross country and all in uh, thangisheri itself those okay. days we had a senior boxer from thangisheri itself his name was binoy s paul Okay. so he used to you know uh, uh, he used to tell me when you go for cross country you call me also so it okay. was an order it was not at all a request and okay. we <laughs> all used to get scared during his time because he was a great boxer during our days so okay. i used to call him and he used to run with me then he has motivated me he said anyhow you are running why don't you learn little boxing also it will help you at least you take it as a uh, you know see as a passion no doubt you are doing athletics so sometimes okay. you can try with boxing also so he taught me boxing and i have picked up like that and uh, later after 3 or 4 months we had a state championship in uh, thangisheri school itself so okay. that was organized by the golden gloves gym and i was also an organizer then all my seniors have forced me let us try you are good you can also compete then i competed over there and uh, uh, luckily or unluckily i was about drawn to box with a senior boxer who has represented kerala five okay. times and okay. he was a degree student in fatima college his name was you know felix mothus so okay. everybody was scared of him then i said i will box with him because i have got nothing to do lose because mm-hmm. i am basically an athlete so let me try like that and uh, i was drawn to box with him in the final and i started boxing first round and i was very comfortable and i saw the senior boxer just back pedaling with, with fright then i came to know these people are nothing and i can uh, you know beat them and i started rushing and moving with the limited skills what i have learned <laughs> okay. and with that itself i was able to beat him one sided so that was the end of his career and that was the beginning of my my career in boxing so it was the beginning of your boxing career and kerala yeah, i yeah, would exactly. say lost Kerala, I would say, lost a good athlete in Chandralal Damodar. Uh, yeah, he moved from exactly. uh, athletics to boxing. Now, uh, yes, you were talking about a school. Uh, you studied in that school while the Tangasheri. For the people who don't know what is Tangasheri, I'll just give a brief for the readers. Tangasheri was an old, uh, so-called bastion in the in Koyalon town, which is a district in Kerala. And Tangasheri was earlier ruled by the Portuguese, the Dutch, later the British. so they have about 100 acres of 99 acres to be exact and it was a multicultural mix of people who came there and studied there and the school played a big role in training students in tangasheri so you studied in that school the anglo indian infant jesus yes. anglo indian school exactly okay yes uh, i'm i'm also very proud to say that i also come from the same town so yes. i know the school very well i've heard so much about it now coming to the major award in your life from that golden gloves club to fatima college where you leave athletics and beat felix and get into boxing yeah in 2007 if i am not mistaken i think you have got the dronachary award from the president of india yeah exactly yeah, and in yeah. 2006 surprisingly the indian team of women boxers banged off all the medals in a world championship event yeah would you would you rate that as the reason for you getting the dronachary award especially for women's boxing yeah exactly you know see the women boxing has started in 2001 all over the world and india also we had the first uh, women national in chennai in 2001 january so you're so telling me that was 2001 was women. all over the world it was all over the world not only <coughs> yeah exactly all over the world it started in 2001 okay and the first world championship was in pennsylvania usa that was in december 2001 and one of my trainee personal trainee lega has participated in that tournament also she okay. lost in the quarter final with a canadian boxer and okay. it was a very tough bout so what happened is you know see 2001 we had only a silver medal that was backed by mericom even mericom okay. couldn't get a gold there so okay. that was the start and when we have were able to win medal in the world championship the government of india and the boxing federation of india started promoting women boxing in a big way and they have selected the best coaches all over the country working in sai as well as in state sports department so mm-hmm. i was 
previously i was looking after the junior men boxers uh, and i was a coach of a indian boxer and that boxer was the first boxer who had won medal in a world championship that was oh. the first ever medal for india in a world championship a so from that training. time that was in 2000 so from okay. there i was migrated to be as a deputy chief coach for the women so from okay. there we started training women in a big way well okay. supported by the ministry of youth affairs as well as by the boxing federation of india so we built it up a good team and in 2006 we prepared the indian boxers and we had a very long training camps with mm -hmm. proper scientific support also okay. and uh, where our federation was asking us that we should get minimum two gold and at the same time we gave them four gold with one silver and three bronze medal that was a big big achievement for india that india was not able to achieve any other world champion rather than these four world champions what we have produced mary com sarida lega casey and jenny arl these four girls were the world champions in 2005 and no doubt after that mary com has repeated her performance but the other four were not able to repeat so, uh, because uh, so, two so, have retired what, what, and what sarida was say? keeping on boxing yeah chandralal just in between the all the of the four boxers you have Leka, you have Mericom, you have Jenny, and you have uh, these four people. Sarida. Sarida. Yeah. They were all Sarida, uh, yeah. all trained by you and your team to get to that level. Actually, you know, we we have trained them in the national camp, and those days the national camp was you know continuously from two thousand one to two thousand uh, you know seven until two thousand seven. It was a continuous training okay. camp, and in okay. between we used to give them leave. So we were training them all together, but at okay. the same time, Sarida and uh, Lega was personally, you know, uh, training under me too. Because in boxing, we have a uh, an apparatus training known as punching pad. That is very, very important for, you know, uh, peaking the performance. They used to okay. hit in a pad and the okay. coach has to show that. So okay. these two girls, uh, you know, Sarida and uh, Lega were hard hitters and they were very uh you know attached and used in uh he in uh, doing punching bad with me so they okay. doesn't go to any other coaches because oh. their timing rhythm speed you know uh, reflexes all has to be monitored and uh, it has to be coordinated to the coach okay. and the trainee should have some sort of understanding too. and these two were training under me and of course because of that uh, close attachment and continuity of the training both of them has won gold medal so okay. that was a, a really a great achievement. And uh, Leka is from Kerala and Sarita is yeah. from Manipur. Manipur. She is okay. from Manipur and Leka is from Kerala. And okay. later what happened, uh, Sarita from Manipur, she has shifted to Kerala. And she came down to Kollam and she came down to Trivandrum, joined my center. And oh. she continued, uh, uh, you know, the rest part of our, uh, you know, boxing career with me. And... Uh, Later stage in 2014-15, she mm -hmm. requested uh, with the Minister of Youth Affairs and Sports, Government of India, seeking my permission as a personal coach too. So during the Olympic qualifying round and uh, 2016 World Championship, I was a personal coach apart okay. from the national coach. Yeah. So you are you are so to just to clarify things is that you are personal coach to both Leka and Sarita. Sarita. Yeah. As well as the official coach of the boxing team also for the rest yes, of the team. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, you have been in, Hung after you, you have done your diploma in boxing and then yeah. sport, and then you've gone to the University of Hungary in uh, physical education and done a course yes, in boxing, yes. international yeah. boxing. Could you please brief us about that, uh, Chandralal? You know, see, after joining Sports Authority of India, uh, we were having only some sort of refresher courses and workshops, seminars inside the country. That was not at all helping us. So later, uh, the, our boxing federation, through Indian Olympic Association, they have approached the International Olympic Committee, uh, known IOC. That's the mm -hmm. highest organization in the world which controls and promotes, uh, you know, sports all over the world. And mm -hmm. they are the one who is having the right to organize the, what you call, Olympic Games too. So, IOC has got certain scholarships. And one scholarship has come to India. And luckily, I was nominated for that, for doing that course. 
and okay. i went to hungary after reaching hungary there were 60 uh, coaches from different parts of the world and okay. out of 60 only 10 people were getting the full uh, sponsorship for okay. that there was an exam also exam was nothing purely uh, basic english and all mm-hmm. and i was able to qualify that exam and my full expenses were sponsored by international olympic committee so Great. that is a, a, a you know chance which i got to study over there and the course was for 6 months and there were coaches from cuba also who have produced olympic champions but uh, you know see because of my uh, effort and uh, whatever the basic training or whatever the basic education what i have gained from my you know alma mater in fengis school and all helped me a lot and okay. later i was judged as the best trainee in that particular course uh, in the hungarian university of physical education at budapest in 2000 i was the one who came out first and because of my performance from next year onwards they have sent two scholarship for india previously wow. it was only one wow so that was a grace at least i have helped another two gentlemen from every year from india to get that this opportunity to do this higher course oh. so i was there for six months in hungary later i have extended for another six more months so i had a very good experience and uh, during my days uh, the coach who was teaching me was uh, mr laslo pop he is no more he was three times olympic gold medalist from hungary so okay. his experience and getting him as a teacher over there it's something great and uh, later i have uh, you know started working in with certain private professional clubs over there mm-hmm. so i have uh, gained a lot of knowledge lot of experience cleared all of our barriers all all of our doubts okay. uh, regarding amateur boxing as well as professional boxing because uh, interesting part like you said was uh, i think according to general knowledge everybody knows cuba is one of the finest boxing producers for some of the yes. finest boxers in the world and so does hungary yes. and you got yes. the mix of both of them when you went for this course and yes. you came out with flying colors and gave india another seat also to go yeah so maybe some day now it's only men going i'm just hoping that one day it will be women people who will go to become dronacharya award winners like you some day Uh, actually you know last year also two of my trainees who okay. have turned women coaches they were also you know uh, they were also in the fray for the dronacharya award actually oh. one of my junior coach she was my trainee too okay. she is from manipur her name is uh, geeda chanu she has okay. produced a youth world champion even a bronze medalist in senior world championship she was okay. also in the fray for the dronacharya award okay. but unfortunately couldn't get you know every year uh, hardly one coach only will get from one discipline and uh, you know from all the discipline hardly three or four coaches are getting it okay. being the other young lady coaches no doubt as you said the coming days of women coaches also will uh, make up to uh, into that level of receiving dronacharya awards uh, thanks to coaches like you who have coached our indian women during a period where there was not much of indian boxers and all of them yeah. have performed and made the country famous at olympian level world championship levels and interestingly you have been traveling with this boxing team over over 22 yeah. countries for olympics world championships uh you know especially i've been going through you've been to uzbekistan you've been to turkey you've been to norway you've been to london you've been to france what according to you what was your most uh, based on your team what was your best trip in the boxing perspective yeah
actually you know see of course uh, the, the best trip was in, in in our country itself when Correct. we won the world champ that was okay. the highest result and the team everybody performed we won maximum gold and maximum medals too apart from that we had a tournament in uh, norway we had a world boxing tournament there also we fared well and after that we had a tournament in denmark prior to our world championship there also we won the team championship beating all the european teams over there european teams as well as some of the russian belt teams so okay. those days indian team was ranked very high as soon as we reached there all eyes are on us and they were very curious to know uh, what, what uh, who are all the team members and which weight category they are going to box because we have been shifting uh, you know some of our boxers in certain weight categories for example okay. sarida Sarida got a bronze medal in world championship in uh, 57 category, 57 kg. KG. Later, we switched uh, to 54 kg. And mm -hmm. in India, during the world championship, when she became a world champion, we brought her down to 52 kg. So that is the gambling what we have done. Uh -huh. And you know, see, when we do some sort of gambling, a lot of criticism, a lot of risk is also there. If we fail, that uh -huh. will be the end of our career. no okay. doubt even the trainee also may say you know bad because previously they have won at least bronze so when we have gambled if it okay. doesn't improve the medal tally or increase the performance so it will doesn't matter it doesn't come into limelight so okay. that's a heavy risk for the coaches so that has happened and even lega was boxing in 81 kg during the world championship in delhi we brought her to 75 kg and uh, uh, 75 kg later became an olympic weight category okay. and uh, you will never believe in uh, a, uh, uh, you know 2006 world championship lega boxed with a chinese boxer in the final her name okay. was jin si li later okay. she was an olympic bronze medalist just imagine and lega retired lega retired and lega defeated her in delhi with a margin of 39 lega scored scored 30 points and a chinese opponent who scored only 9 so that was a big difference but after you know see when women boxing has been inducted into the olympic games in 2012 this mm -hmm. chinese girl won a bronze medal whereas lega couldn't take part because she got retired and at the same time she got married and she was you know carrying at that stage so this oh. is a vital part for women once they change to the family life they may be champions but they cannot prolong so this okay. is a big uh, you know scenario so for that, female that's very that's so very some juniors get the chance to yeah no problem back yes. to the thing we'll come back to that is see it's very interesting because uh, of these women champions after they get married and you know like i i remember you telling me over a conversation that you know leka and i mean they are all in the police there are there as a commissioner of police great job yeah uh, yeah yeah could you please explain the yes. these championship the positions of these ladies at least you know see in uh, 2006 world championship uh, for example sarida was a sub inspector sarida and merikom was just a sub inspector in manipur police okay when they won the world championship we got the message that that the dgp has declared them as the superintendent of police in their state wow the very next day jenny was a head constable based on boxing they were posted as a head constable and she also got a promotion promoted as a superintendent of police in mizoram wow. whereas lega was just a clerical staff in the uh, you know finance uh, department government of kerala okay and she couldn't get much promotion because they had certain restrictions and all but after coming back winning the world championship we have given a representation to the chief minister and mm -hmm. later she got a promotion she was uh, given five increment but now she is an under secretary in the finance department wow. and uh, very young of age and uh, definitely when she gets retired she will be almost able to confer an ias even if okay. they are you know keeping on the track now this olympics we have five weight categories and uh, you know we have bright chances indian women uh, repeating the olympic medal in the coming olympics so that's a great sign great oh. sign we will i will feel very happy because 
I was one among these pillars who have brought these girls up to this level. And okay. uh, last two years, I'm not going to the national camp due to certain medical problems. Okay. Uh, otherwise, I was a regular regular coach in the national camps. And my presence over there was widely accepted by the boxers from Northeast as well as from North. Okay. For all the readers, for people who are viewing, you must understand that Chandralal Damodaran has been the coach of the Indian boxing team, I think, over 25 times. 25, 26 times. You have been the coach of the Indian boxing team. You have the male yeah. boxing on one side, but it was a women boxing where you became an inspiration and a personal trainer for these women. Uh, I'm sure that you must have built a bond around these people because the way they have been trained by you, there's, a, there's something beyond uh, what do you call uh, just doing a job, correct? It is more than yeah, that. Yeah, it is, it, was, it is some sort of dedication and commitment is needed. You know, mm -hmm. the starting days of women boxers, nobody was having a job. So they were all coming from, you know, no, I don't say they are from middle class families. They are from lower middle class families. So okay. uh, they were striving very hard. They are very hard workers. You know, I have trained the men team as well as women team. Women, uh, what I feel is, they will never waste time. Either they will give or they will take. They don't want to waste any time. Whatever, mm. uh, you know, the time is there, they don't want to fool around in the ring also. So okay. the willingness of taking punishment was very, very high. Initially, we did not think that uh, women has the capacity to bear the punishment. So mm. by our experience, by training with them, we have been putting them in hard sparring too. So their willingness was very, very hard and they were hard workers. So that has really paid them. And oh. in the initial days, building up techniques always takes more time. But mm -hmm. conditioning them harder and, uh, you know, building up strength is easier at the lower level. So oh. initially, Indian team was, you know, basically boxing. We were doing power boxing, not skillful boxing. Mm -hmm. For developing skill, you need time. And uh, the, we were having less time. Since if you want to perform or peak faster, so we have to build up certain qualities which give you faster results. So we were concentrating in that. Later, of course, the skill plays a vital role. And skill will remain throughout your life. The fitness will go off once you stop training. So, so, so a part in parallel to that, the skill training also came up. And it is just because of their mere dedication and hard work which uh, has, you know, uh, diverted our concentration also to it. When they are hardworking, naturally, then we should also, you know, we should support them and Absolutely. should also guide them. So that has helped. That has helped vice versa. And no doubt they have achieved also good results. And no doubt we have also came into limelight. Better results were coming more than men. So naturally, the coaches who were attached with the women's camp were giving more, getting more recognition than the okay. coaches who were working with the men's team. So okay. it is always a competition. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, to put it very simply, I know it's very complicated, but you have the power boxing, you have the skill, like you said, to be built up. Yeah. But in between, like you say, the weight category is the training. The part of the training is... How much role does food and nutrition play in this? I I was always uh, because yeah because you know often... see uh, not only food and nutrition is what we have since I have uh, studied abroad I have come to know the importance of sports sciences. Sports sciences plays a vital role. No doubt in India, uh, unfortunately, these things uh, have been ignored in the initial days. Nowadays, they are. They are coming please, to limelight. Please explain what, yeah. what is uh, uh, the sciences, uh, the sports sciences? What, what? I mean, the sports sciences, especially sports medicine, sports okay. medicine, sports physiology, sports mm. biomechanics, and you know, see anthropometry. So all these things are sports psychology. It is all connected for for a person to perform. And uh, what we say in when we studied abroad, we have come to know that the. Uh, Coach is only a small ring in a big chain. That's what we say. We are just one small ring in a big chain. And everybody has got their duty to perform too. But this is not in India. It's in advanced countries. That's why 
those days why these advanced countries were doing better than india not only in boxing in all the sports but later now in india also all these departments has come into existence and some are doing well some has to improve some are still in the primitive stage i am okay. not mentioning what it is so okay. these things has got a vital role and of course what you have mentioned sports nutrition this yeah. is a very very big part you know see when we are in the national camp no doubt there is a fixed menu everything good nutritionist foods are there but we doesn't know whether all our trainees what they are eating and when as far as eating part is concerned every individual has got likes and dislikes tasty yeah. and not tasty so we will go as per our taste only some of the <laughs> vitamins <laughs> which sorry to, may sorry not to, be tasty sorry yeah. sorry to interrupt in between what i wanted to yeah. tell you was i'm sure you know because india is a it's a big mix of so many states and cultures so you have boxers yeah. coming from manipur maharashtra punjab so when they eat together or the part of the training yeah. they they'll be they will naturally tend to eat what they have eaten when they were young or is, is there a taste thing to it or they will eat anything which is given for trainees or do they have a specific food pattern no actually we have a menu we have a, a menu which has been uh, you know uh, made as per in, in consultation with the sports science as well as a nutritionist okay apart from the menu what i have seen is even in patiala uh, our director those days in patiala has given a green signal to all the trainees what happened is they used to have surprise check up in the uh, residential wing and uh, the director was uh, surprised to see that every room is having a uh, electric cooker oh. electric gas stove then he realized these people even though the food uh, they are providing is highly nutritious quality wise good everything still mm-hmm. they want some food of their own choice of okay. all, of their own taste then he has given uh, permission to all the coaches ask your trainees not to cook inside the room because it's all sometimes short circuit can come it's all electric Maybe. plugs and all so yes. uh, yeah so in order to avoid these type of you know undue incidents and all he mm-hmm. said after 1 o'clock the full kitchen will be free for any trainee to cook their own food as per their liking okay. so that vessels have been provided even the groceries were provided as well as all the facilities in the kitchen were provided because the girls from manipur will have their own taste the girls from haryana has got a different taste exactly so, this was permitted this was officially permitted okay. so what i feel is you know see the, especially the girls from northeast and south prefers lot of non veg food oh, understood well, and some of the non veg okay. is not permitted inside our official mess for example beef is not allowed as per uh, you know our culture so some of the trainees prefer to have beef and uh, you know pork is not allowed because the muslims uh, doesn't eat uh, you know pork over right. there so right. uh, north east children prefers to have pork so okay. in spite of all and uh, uh, the girls from haryana some are vegetarian so they have their own choice of having you know rich vegetarian foods so based on these conditions the okay. administrators given permission to have their own food their own cooking apart from the regular Uh, diets what we just provided our mess okay. so that has helped a lot that has really helped a lot otherwise too these trainees were hiding and cooking in the room itself oh. so because you know see they want their favorite type of foods so as base. far as nutrition is concerned i didn't tell you some of the vitamins which the which is needed in their body mm-hmm. uh, are not coming through their normal intake because okay. of likes and dislikes so naturally if you are monitored by a good nutritionist well uh, you know uh, test has to be conducted by uh, by, uh, by efficient doctors okay. then we can find out what type of vitamin is deficient for them and no doubt it has to be given if it is not coming through the food stuff it has to be uh, you know balanced mm-hmm. by vitamin so, supplements yes. yeah oh. then only we can enhance the a uh, real performance of these trainees it is a scientific process scientific process okay yeah now uh, <clears throat> you uh, you have just got an order for you have now 
come back to Kerala and the Kerala government has now post or the central government, I don't know, please explain that your new posting in Trivandrum, the capital yeah. of Kerala, yeah. the GV <laughs> Raja Sports School. Could you please explain your yeah. new position now? What do you Actually, got? you know, see, I was in Kerala. Uh, since I is an All India transfer posting and all, sometimes many places this problem arises. Sometimes we have certain difference of opinion with the administrators too. So, mm -hmm. you know, see, we always fight for the, you know, uh, betterment of these uh, sports people. Correct. So some people take it in a wronger sense too. So mm -hmm. I have been fighting always throughout my lifetime, throughout my career in Sai for the benefit of boxers. Mm -hmm. I will never compromise in this aspect. So uh, two, three times I have also put into trouble because mm -hmm. I am not compromising for these things. So okay. based on that, I was in Trivandrum. Uh, last three years, they have transferred me to Aurangabad. Uh, you know, see, it was also because of certain likes and dislikes. Okay. And, and uh, me getting more image from the public, some administrators will not, uh, that will not digest for them. So I don't take it in uh, in wrong sense. They are doing their duty and I'm doing my duty. By a mere transfer, nobody can put the talent of a coach down. So three years before, I have been transferred from Kerala to Maharashtra. For Correct. no reason. But after my retirement, I have come back hardly one month back here to Kerala. Mm -hmm. After reaching here, there were more than 140 applicants for the Lifetime Suresh Babu Award. And okay. I was uh, nominated for that. That clearly shows the, the effort and the hard work, what I have done during my full career. Not yeah. only in Kerala, but okay. in other parts of the country. That was well recognized by the administrators in Kerala. Uh, state sports council. I really appreciate that. And second thing, throughout my lifetime, I was working in Sai, and my salary was not above 1.45 lakhs. Okay. I have come up to 1.42. That was my last salary, one lakh forty-two thousand. But mm -hmm. now I am, uh, you know, I've been uh, selected to join, and within three four days I'll be joining okay. for a, a salary of 1.50. So that's a big recognition as far as me, I'm concerned because I'm a retired man yeah. coming back after a very long tenure of 36 years. Okay. So no doubt my age is catch up. My muscles may not be functioning as I, it was functioning before. But okay. still the government of Kerala is ready to offer me because they have trusted me and they, they know that I have done something for the sport and can be expected more in the coming days too. So that's a green sign. So if my parent department has, you know, kept me away from my hometown, but after my retirement, I think I'm getting more recognition. Okay. And I think my second innings will be better than my first innings. That's the what I'm, uh, you know, uh, thinking of it. If uh, the Almighty gives me the full strength to fulfill my dreams, I think, uh, you know, not only Lega, not only Sarida, Again, uh, one or two world champions also can come from Kerala in the coming days. That's what I think of. Absolutely, uh, Chandra. We wish you all the best on that. That is for sure. But, you know, think like Kerala, Kerala government, the whole culture of Kerala, if you look in any field, the women have had some phenomenal roles to play and the government has yes. always promoted that part. We, we take any field. Uh, as a, as a Keralaite or as an Indian, you know that the Kerala women have been empowered pretty well by uh, the government and the support they get. And I'm sure, like, I, I read somewhere where you had been invited to a school and where you spoke to small school girls, small school girls. I, in, in, there's a yeah. picture of a small girl sparring with you. I saw a picture yeah. of that. Yeah. Right. yeah. Let's hope that uh, you you will take it across. What is your take on these uh, young kids in schools, girls or boys? boxing actually you know that photograph was in uh, ernakulam there is a school by name sahodraya vidyalaya in ernakulam okay. it was a function uh, one of my trainee has started a uh, dronacharya boxing academy in ernakulam that was the inaugural function held at that particular school 
So okay. I was the chief guest for that function. And mm. it was uh, an interaction with the, uh, I mean, girl students. It was a girl school. Yeah. So that was a function over there. As uh, you know, you have well pointed out that Indian women in India, uh, see, initial days when we were doing sports, the Punjabi girls were dominating even in Indian athletics. Okay. Later, what happened? The Kerala women started, uh, you know, uh, overcoming them. And uh, Kerala women has dominated Indian athletics. Not only in athletics, volleyball, basketball, swimming too. Correct. So later, with my help, we have become, uh, you know, national champions more than one time, defeating the powerful Manipur team, where, which is, uh, you know, comprising of Sarida, Maricom and all. And mm -hmm. those days, the federation was from Ariana. So Ariana was well-funded and well-supported and well popularized by women boxers over there. So okay. beating Haryana and Manipur, Kerala becoming a national champion, it's it's something great. It is just because of only my effort. And I was the only coach, and all the trainees were training under me. Only And Kerala team was only my center team. We were not having one girl from outside. So that was the you know uh, initial okay. days. And okay. later we have, you know, see, some of the girls who have been boxing with my trainees from Kerala, they used to say, oh, Kerala girls are very strong. They have very power pack punches. Once you get mm -hmm. the hard punch, you cannot survive. So that was the, uh, you know, comments what we used to listen from the women from other states. But okay. one thing I say that, you know, see, the Kerala has got a different culture. What I personally feel is, because of our uh, religious tradition and, you know, uh, the system what we were following. Okay. We were not giving much, uh, you know, platform for our women to perform. Yes. That's what I, I feel. Not okay. now, before. Now, yes. see, they have crossed all those barriers and they have come into forefront and they are dominating in many fields. Even mm -hmm. in politics, they are doing well. So, mm -hmm. what I feel is, if we given the right platform, if you give them an opportunity... Definitely, Kerala women will dominate. But they yeah. are having some sort of restriction because of they are scared of the society. They mm -hmm. may be scared of the elders. They may be scared of the family members. So if we give an opportunity, if we give a right platform, no doubt they will dominate. So boxing ring is also a platform for them. There, you know, it is it is a man-to-man -man contact. Yep. So but it, it is a direct, uh, you know, nobody is going to help you inside the ring. Mm -hmm. And you cannot run off also because it is well protected with the ropes. Okay. So there it is a question like that. Do or die. You yeah. have to react. And once I feel that a real platform, Kerala women started dominating and they have that instinct in them. Mm -hmm. Only thing we should find out and groom them and develop them. That is the only thing being a coach, what we have to do. Uh, considering that you are taking charge now, you have always been in charge. Now, you, you've got the charge, you're in Kerala. There's definitely going to be a turnout of women well-groomed, well-trained by you and your team so that we can look forward to a lot of women boxers in high places, both in India as well as international. Yeah. My yes. next thing was actually getting to the end of the interview. It's been a COVID year of all that beautiful training that hit and this, this COVID has hit us. I'm definitely sure it's affected boxers in a certain range. But then now it's slowly opening up again and there's an Olympics which has been delayed. But uh, what is your view of these women boxers for the next world championships and uh, coming up Olympics whenever it happens? Yeah. Actually, you know, COVID, uh, of course, it has not only hit in our country, it has hit all over the world. So this particular aspect is bothering every sportsman all over the world. But uh, unfortunately, Kerala, especially in India, especially I can say Kerala. Kerala has given a lot of preventive measures, but still it has crossed all the limits and come out. And right. still there are a lot of restrictions. Even some of the stadiums are not opened yet. Mm -hmm. And some of the uh, you know, sports hostels run by say, Kerala Sports Council and Sai, some have not opened yet because they have you know dormitory type of accommodation. So, COVID, you need some sort of, you know, separate isolation, distance. And distance. Uh, yeah, these things are all bothering us. Whereas the European countries doesn't bother much because their system is entirely different. They have independent rooms. 
the socializing is not much distancing is possible and uh, it is not thickly populated so india and china being the you know uh, being the uh, population yes. rate yeah, yeah. is also very high so we had a lot of restrictions no doubt and boxing being a contact sport it was not allowed to train and you know see because of the for preventing covid contact sports were restricted so right. naturally the performance of our national boxers has gone down no doubt mm -hmm. no doubt the other countries also might have gone down but uh, our uh, effect is much more higher than any other countries so still uh, we have a couple of months more uh, because of the you know see uh, our tradition is like that our children uh, have the capacity to come back fast so now the boxing federation of india has taken a lot of effort they are one of our team is in spain now uh, we had another competition in serbia so they are all picking up yesterday mary com has defeated one girl and she is and she is the first indian to reach the medal stage today so they have all started picking up and uh, what i feel is even uh, covid has killed us no doubt in sports sporting activities also has been uh, you know put into a halt still i feel that indian boxers are going to perform well and definitely indian women boxers i expect minimum two medals in uh, olympics two from girls side and we have uh, two prominent senior men boxers also having the medal chances in the olympics so total four medals is my you know expectation in olympics if all things goes well in the coming days anyway it's been uh, it's been such an honor and such an interest talking to you because uh, boxing has always as a per personally it's been a very good you know way to watch boxing we watch it in the movies we watch it there but never got to know that a uh, friend i would call you from my hometown where we yeah. studied together many years ago has yes. has reached the pinnacle in his life and has come back home and like you rightly said we are just a ring in a long chain yeah you're just a ring but that small ring in the chain actually i would go back to the golden gloves so let let may you thrive may more boxers be developed in kerala and may golden gloves remain golden thank you very much for coming on the interview thank you mono Uh, uh, when you said, uh, you know, see, I just uh, quote one more thing. When you said about golden gloves, uh, in Thangisheri School, we used to organize, you know, the state open uh, championships, sometimes right. official state championships. Those mm -hmm. championships were organized by Golden Gloves uh, Gym, and I was also part of the organization also. Okay. So those days, uh, the boxers from other district also loves to come to Thangisheri for. <laughs> taking part in this competition it is only because we get a beautiful spectators and i can say they were decent spectators who love okay. sports who love boxing okay. and uh, uh, you will be surprised to hear infant jesus school ground for witnessing boxing 60% of the crowd will be female so that much full <laughs> support we used to get from the female crowd they love wow. boxing because the majority are anglo indians they have some sort of you know the sporting culture with them yeah, itself yeah, yeah. so that that they encourage whoever is uh, you know doing well they don't bother to encourage only the home team or the local boys no they encourage outsiders if they are performing well too so yeah. i say that we had a beautiful uh, viewers spectators in thangesheri whenever we had sporting activities especially boxing over there now right. for the past many years these tournaments are not coming up in you uh, know uh, thangesheri many people have uh, you know after me uh, reaching they have always they used to say why don't you have one more tournament uh, why even, don't you uh, even i'm still even i am talking on behalf of the daily brunch uh, why don't you take an initiative to do something like that because that is a place yeah that... definitely definitely oh. you know see mono i am going to start uh, a training uh, you know small center over there mm -hmm. at the same time we are going to revive uh, the golden gloves boxing tournament you know see since i was a product from that and uh, now of course because of my uh, reputation and my relationship i can good. arrange good sponsors also 
So right. let's. Uh, but uh, one uh, sad thing is now there is no boxers from Tangishir. Got that's, it. That's the sad right. part. Those days we had local boxers also. So naturally yeah. the involvement and the performance was good enough. So I thought of reviving some sporting activities. Uh, you know some. Training centers coming up in Dangesheri, and of mm -hmm. course the Golden Gloves tournaments. I love to have that once more, and we should oh. also show the youngsters that still the crowd is good enough to promote boxing in that small, you know, uh, a distant place from the town known as beautiful Dangesheri. Beautiful Dangesheri, right? So all the best to that dream and your mission. Let it continue, Chandralal. Thank you very much for coming on board and talking to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Manu. Thanks for sparing your time. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye.